Hey guys, welcome back to the Nerdy Gritty, where we delve deep into the details of pop culture. I am Dez. I'm Fox. And, uh, hey, how are you guys this fine day? I hope you're doing well. I'm gonna assume you are, since we can't actually hear what you're saying. Oh, I can't. That's weird. I know, right? Sorry, I wasn't talking to you. Somebody else was saying something. Uh, oh, okay, 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 Dez. That, you, you do you. Um... So oh. we we're pretty excited yeah. today because the Tomb Raider trailer oh, right. just dropped. Right. Yeah. It and did. so, Fox, what did you think about the Tomb Raider trailer? Uh, I'm not, like, super pumped about it, but also I think it looks fine. Yeah. We were talking earlier, my, my standard for, like, the best video game adaptation movie is um, Prince of Persia, where it's, like, it's nothing amazing, it's not bad, but it does a good job of translating prince of persia into a live action thing with actual people who actually interact with each other and this from what it can what i can tell looks similar like looks like it could do the same thing you don't think super mario brothers with bob hoskins <laughs> is oh the, i forgot about that yeah i mean the goombas just screen accurate oh absolutely amazing yoshi it's great bob hoskins himself hates that movie i well he's dead now so doesn't mean he doesn't hate it. <laughs> He's still hating it yeah. beyond the grave. Yeah. Uh, so, I, actually, I was watching it, and what I was saying is that Laura looks too competent. Like, she... The, the movie looks fun. You're it looks really sexist. great. But the whole part of what made the first Tomb Raider game awesome is the, that... The reboots we're talking about. Here. Yeah. The, the re- reboot. The ri- is, was it Rise of the Tomb Raider? No, it was just Tomb Raider. Oh, just Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb, Tomb Raider is the second okay. one. Yeah. Is Lara is learning to survive in yeah. that first one? Like it is a survival game. She is still prepared for an expedition. Like right. she has some knowledge of what to do in the wild. But yeah, she's not like ready she doesn't to take f- two guns and be like, <laughs> uh, or doesn't take a gun and be like, I'll take two of them. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, a little bit like that. But um, yeah, I I agree. They might make her a little more prepared, but also. You have two hours to tell the story instead oh, yeah. of however long you want to tell the story in a in a video game. So, oh wait, 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 hold on! I've got some breaking news from the uh, Des and Fox uh, Des and Fox news desk. Um, uh, oh, okay, hold on. Okay, so I hold just on. want to let you guys know this is something that Fox says that he wanted to talk about beforehand. Yes, but he would this is not very tell important. What it is. This is very important. This is You've, this is news to me too, Des. You have. Heard of the wildfires, I assume. Yeah, okay. Consideringly, so, we live 25 miles from one of the big ones. If you guys don't know, we live in uh, just outside of Portland, and there were Eagle Creek wild wildfires right. that were massive and were very, very close to us for a while. Des's house was under level one evacuation, which means, right. like, get ready to go. I knew people right. that were under level two evacuation. You, okay, sure, sure. You've heard of the hurricanes, I assume. Yes. There's been uh, a couple we're on hurricanes. M now. We're on the fourth. Yeah, it's ridiculous how many yeah. dis- massive destructive ones there are. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, I assume you've heard of the now two different earthquakes, earthquakes that have hit Mexico. Yep. Hundreds Here's dead. the thing. Because of the mainstream media, you probably have not heard of this new di- uh, this this di- natural disaster. This new natural is it the the geo whatever movie? Oh no! Geo oh no! Fire no, that looks amazing. That looks like uh, so what we're talking fire. about here is uh, it's actually sweeping through Colorado Springs. I have been there. I have friends that live there, and I'm actually very worried. So I hope they're safe. Oh, um, no. What is happening? Okay. I'm just going to read this story as it was it was given <laughs> so to me. Excited for this. Uh, there's no use trying to skirt around this. Uh, So let's cut to the chase. A Colorado Springs woman has been taking big craps (laughs) in front of someone's house for a few weeks now. They're calling her the Mad Pooper. Mad Pooper. (laughs) This is very important. This is a big disaster, guys. She's she's a jogger that will jog, and then when she feels need, the need to go, she'll just she'll just she goes. She'll just poop. She carries paper towels around with her. (laughs) Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. They're calling her the mad pooper, and then she won't stop. (laughs) The cops are involved. It appears to be some sort of revenge pooping. What? There's more. There's more. Uh, So I'm reading this. This is basically an article. There was a video, but whatever. It's There's a guy who says, it's not just a natural thing we do in our society to drop your trousers and uh, relieve yourself right in, right there when you know there's people around. He really cut to the heart of things with that statement. 
Uh, there's some other quotes that were particularly great, though, from it. Uh, Can we get to the end of this? No, 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 no. Because it's oh, a crappy story. Yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> They're like, there's a lady taking a poop. So I come outside and I'm like, are you serious? Are you really taking a poop right here in front of my kids? And she's like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's her reaction. Yep. <laughs> Not bad. Here's a, here's a quote from Sergeant Jonathan Sharketty. Cool last name. Shark Eddie. Mm, nice. Sharketti. It's abnormal. It's not something I've seen in my career. <laughs> for someone to repeatedly do such a thing, it's uncharted territory for me. <laughs> like, this guy just clearly could not. He was holding Speaking in his of laughter. adventure games, this is uncharted territory. <laughs> yeah, there There's a public restroom less than a block away from where that was happening. This is intentional. Nathan Drake never had to deal with this. That'd be great, though. Disagree. Uh, I'd love, yeah, come on. Uncharted 5. The Mad Pooper. <laughs> Drake's pooping. Drake's pooping. Alright, here we go. Is she a world class, class crapper who can crap dozens of times a day and therefore needs variety? Maybe she's just getting bored? Is she motivated by some animal instinct to, to befoul as much of the city as phys- physiological, po- physiologically possible? Why doesn't she pick more prominent targets? You know, like what if she are political opponents and stuff? Here's the real question. Is the Colorado Springs PD ready for retaliatory pooping? Yes. Are they going to get their poop squad out there? <laughs> the find where she is. lives and poop in her yard. Because that would be the best way to respond. Or what if like, because like, there are a few places that they said that she's come to more than once. Yes. If they just set up like poop bombs, so when she squats, those things explode and just she just covers her in human feces. Oh, I love it. So watch out. If you live in Colorado Springs, the mad pooper is going to get you. Can we please talk about what we're actually No, yeah, now we're going to talk about stunts because that's a pretty ridiculous stunt. That's, that's my se- terrible segue. Well, my segue was going to be, do you think Alicia Vikander did her own stunts? Oh, I have no idea. Maybe. No, I, I ha- she's an Academy Award winner. I doubt that she's going to Hey, you know who else is an Academy stunts. Award winner? Um, A lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't have anything. Anywhere Emma Stone? To go with that. That's true. She did uh, all of her own stunts Jennifer in La La Lawrence. Land. She did. <laughs> when they were floating up in the sky, dancing together, actually happening. Yep. True story. They no, floated no in wires the sky. or whatever. Yeah. But that's Ryan Gosling's ability. Emma Stone was just along with that's, him. Well, that's true. He is dreamy. Oh, man. Um, mm. Thank you, Canada. Anyway. So well, today we're talking about stunts. We're talking about stunts and cool stunts and the real question of whether or not... Uh, a- actors, an actual actor, rather than a stunt double, should do those stunts in a- in an action movie. Right. So this came from uh, a couple of things. Uh, number one, not too long ago. How long ago was it with Tom Cruise when he was filming his new... Uh, you his... mean Mission Impossible 5? Yeah. That we... was... That came out last year, I think. That was Maybe last... even the year before. Oh, so it would have been two years it's, ago. It's not, it's not a super recent movie. So, but there was the when issue... When he hung when... off the side of the airplane? When he was uh, recording that movie... Right. Excuse me. He got hurt. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you're not prepared for this. Basically, I forgot the guy's name. Tom Cruise. Oh, the, the other Tom Cruise. Yeah. The other one is are you talking about Danny Trejo. No, well, Danny Trejo had something to Tan. say about it. We'll uh, Louis Tan. Louis Tan. There you yes. Go. So more recently, Louis Tan, uh, had a conversation. If you haven't seen the Iron Fist, uh, Netflix, Netflix series, show. you're okay. Yeah, it's it's the least good of the the Marvel Netflix shows. Right. But uh, there was some talk ahead of time of casting uh, Louis Tan. Louis Tan. He went in and like w- they were basically ready to give him the part. Right. But and this is something else we can talk about another time. Uh, they wanted somebody who looked like Iron Fist. Right. A, a white man who with blonde hair. typically and blue a white eyes. guy. Yeah. And so they cast. Uh, and after after Loras Tyrell dies, spoiler, of Game of Thrones. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, the actor who plays. Seamus Finnegan. <laughs> nope. That's that's the most stereotypical Irish name you could come up with. <laughs> that's that's the Harry Potter. That's. Seamus. Oh, yeah. Harry Potter, that's yeah. his name. Yeah, most stereotypical. Yeah. No, the actor who played uh, the Iron Fist, Danny... Danny Rand. Danny Rand. 
They what cast is, him instead. They cast him instead because now Game of Thrones is well, – he was done with Game of Thrones. So And so anyway, uh, Louis Tan got a very small part as a drunken master. Oh, and he did it was one of the awesome. best parts of oh, the show. Oh, man, that was such a good It fight. actually had some, like, personality and fun to it, which is what uh, Iron Fist kind of lacked most well, of and, the time. And clearly Louis Tan has studied drunken boxing. Oh, so yeah, he knew what he was doing. somebody who has years of martial arts experience, I can say that he was very familiar with drunken boxing. Right. And it was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it was really to fun watch. to watch him. Like he beca- he obviously stole that scene. Right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But he came out a little bit mockingly toward the actor who plays Danny Rand. The whole uh, world is mocking that right now. Yeah. And basically was saying, you know, well, I do my own stunts. Sure. Then later on Twitter, people had taken still scenes of still shots of the scenes from that, and. uh of pictures of the guy's face, and it was clearly yeah. not Louis Tan. There's clearly a stunt double being used. Right. And at which point it was saying, uh, if you never, or if you always do your own stunts, who is this guy? N- yeah. Which which is a fair point. If you're going to come out and make that statement, then you need to, like, be able to back it up. But also, some qualifiers, a lot of people don't know how long a fight scene can take. Right. Um, I, so I was reading an interview with uh, Colleen whatever her name is, the actress. Right. When they were filming her fight scene in the cage with the two guys, like the second time she goes back, took mm-hmm. f- two full days. Even though it's like a, a maybe a minute or two of no, footage. Like four minutes. It, maybe. But, yeah. Right. Of actual fighting, though. It's not very long. It took two full days to do that. 12-hour days. So, A, you pay your actors for however long you want them. Right. Um, B... When you're only like when you're filming a shot of Colleen attacking, you don't necessarily need the same guy. If you're just showing her kicking, you just could have some guy standing there reacting. You yeah. don't need a stunt, a uh, uh, like a oh, actor, like world class actor stunt double to be there. You just need some guy to be able to literally see somebody's arm or something like that. So you got to qualify it by saying like, yeah, he probably did all of his own stunts in the shots he's actually in. Right. <laughs> But there were times that he was probably freaking exhausted sure. from doing backflips and sure. drunken boxing for six hours. And he's like, cool. <laughs> and he's I actually need... drunk the whole time, yeah. so probably had to take a few naps. It's like, I need a break. And they're like, but we don't want to stop filming. So they probably brought it. Anyway, that's not the point. The point of what we're really discussing here is right. should actors do their own stunts because stunt work is kind of an art form. It's a beautiful thing when you do it well. And actors should aspire to be able to do this really well, cool thing they might should aspire might should that that's yeah that's how you say that might that's really the question uh just at the off the bat here i am pro actors being stunt artists right more so than i am against it and or on the flip side should actors not be doing that because if they actually get injured while doing this uh people lose their jobs because right. the the Best boy, the key grip, uh, the, the whole crew. Other, the whole crew. If you're not well, if you're not filming something that the actor he needs to be there, if you can't film anything else, then yeah, you're done. Right. For and however so, long it yeah, takes if to it's recover. A six month thing that those people are not getting paid for six months, and that's if they get hired back on right. when production starts again. Right. And so, at that point, just because Tom Cruise feels like doing his own stunts, mm-hmm. but then he gets hurt. Other people are losing their jobs. So I am actually on the other side of things, which, by the way, we, we are not always going to disagree on things. No. But the, the last couple of times we kind of just have. Yeah. So uh, I am on the other side of things where I say, you know what? Uh, leave the stunt to the stuntmen. They're, that's literally specifically what they're trained for. You're, you're in the Danny Trejo side of things. Yeah. So uh, Danny Trejo, if you guys don't know who that is. he's One of the greatest actors ever, ever. So cool. Uh, he's Machete. He's uh, a villain in... Pretty much every movie Robert Rodriguez ever made. Oh, yeah, 100%. And um, then every other movie that's ever been made. Yeah. And <laughs> Anytime it, you need somebody who's been in prison, you get Danny Trejo. Right, absolutely. So anyway, uh, the, he tweeted basically saying stars should not do their own stunts because... Yeah. It's actually an interview that he did. Oh, an interview. That's yeah. what it is. Stars should not do their own stunts because <clears throat> anytime they get hurt, 180 people lose their jobs just to prove that they have big cojones. Yes. You know what I mean? He was so, he was in an interview and they asked him if he did his stunts. And he said, no, I don't need to do that to prove. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to prove anything. And he does not. No. He's, he's, <laughs> he's probably actually killed old, people, he's a scary man. beaten more people up than than Tom Cruise has ever pretended to on, right. a, on a movie. <laughs> 
Uh, so, okay, Fox, why do you think that actors should do this? Like you said, I think it's, I think it's an art form. Mm-hmm. Um, like martial arts is not just about, it really isn't about being able to beat somebody up. Mm-mm. That's, that's a benefit. Like self defense is something that can come from it, but it's really about discipline. It's really about like the art form, the, the, the grace, the ability to st- like perform essentially martial arts, any, any, a, a form of it. And to me, that I think that's what in a sense stunt, uh, artistry is. You are able to perform certain things, and I think it all just goes to creating a better film. Hmm. Um, for example, one of my literally one, actually one of my favorite actors, Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is apparently known as one of the the best stunt drivers in the business, which is also obviously incredibly dangerous. If you're getting right. knocked around in a in a car that's getting crushed by other cars. You could get whiplash or break your neck pretty easily, but if you've watched John Wick or John Wick 2, the opening scene of John Wick 2, there's an in like a shot inside the car that's like straight at him and shows and it's clearly Keanu Reeves just getting battered by other cars. They call it the the car gangbang scene <laughs> because like six cars just ram into his while he's inside. And obviously it's not just actual cars hitting it. They have some some right. special effects. He's on like a trailer, but it is actually cars hitting a thing and making his car move. And he's getting tossed around, and the fact that you can actually see Keanu Reeves and know that it's Keanu Reeves makes the scene better, I think. When it's an actual person, instead of having it be a wide-angle shot. Or like or a like, shot from the back of the car where you can only we just see, the back see Yeah, or if it's like all in shadow. Yeah. It would still, it just wouldn't have the realism. I mean, this goes for all the John Wick action scenes. Like being able to show John Wick close up from the front doing all the gunplay that he does, because right. Keanu Reeves can do that, uh, it just makes you believe it's happening, even though it's him shooting, you know, mafia men in a weird underground tunnels of... It, like, it's just this weird thing. It helps your uh, suspension of disbelief. Hmm. I think that's a very important part of it. Um, Tom Cruise is actually hanging off the side of that airplane in Mission Impossible 5. Right. Um, I think that kind of helps you, like... Okay, this is actually happening because it's actually happening, rather than you just assuming that it's happening because you can see it from a distance and see a see the a body. Right. Hanging well, like the you sun. said, it's the suspension of disbelief. Right. Where if you have, he's not Tom Cruise. He's Ethan last name Ethan in, Hunt. Ethan Hunt, and uh, and you see him as Ethan Hunt, but then all of a sudden you get like a, a quick glimpse of his profile. And that's clearly not Tom Cruise. Yeah. You were immediately removed from that situation. Right. And you're like, oh, well, okay, that's right. I'm watching a movie. Or I'm even if you're, invested. if you're someone like me who actually looks looks for these things while watching a movie, um, even I, I, sometimes I can pick out like, oh, we haven't seen his face at all in this scene. That's not him. Right. We have seen his hair fly in front of his face or like he's done some roles or something. Like you just, you, you can never see him. That's a stunt double, which right. isn't a bad thing, but it does stand out to me. And it's again, uh, as a martial artist in fight scenes, uh, I can very often pick out like, okay, there's a scene of them from the torso up, and you can clearly see their face and their movements. Their fighting is so stiff and so rehearsed mm-hmm. that this is not a natural thing. But then it's a pan out, and you can't see their faces, and their movements are smooth and fluid yeah. and natural. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's clearly a stunt. Double. There's no skill level changes up Absolutely. and down between. Yeah, like you could like I'm looking for that, and I can clearly see. And and I agree. It, there is like a oh well that's a stunt bow. I've suddenly been removed from that. I uh, to me like I'm even I'm I'm removed from it when I even notice hey that's Keanu Reeves. I actually like the movie more though when it when Ooh. it's I know the movie's lying to me because it's not real. But when it does all it can to convince me that this is actually what's happening and that's the guy that's there, then I appreciate the movie more and am invested in watching it more. I mean I, I like it. I enjoy the movie more because it's doing what it can. Or I would say that, um, and I come from kind of a a baseball standpoint on this. uh, I was going to bring this up. With a pitcher in baseball, uh, they teach you not to touch anything with your bare hand. Because that is your pitching hand. And if you hurt your hand and you have to be pulled from the game or you're out for a week or two weeks, bringing up another pitcher is 
really bad because that's typically typically going to be some triple a guy or somebody from your bullpen or whatever else somebody who's not as qualified as you and it's not going to work out more so uh, if you ever watch a baseball game i don't know if you guys do watch baseball or not i love it though uh, they'll teach pitchers to do things <clears throat> like kick it with your foot or use your glove or seriously duck just duck curl into a ball and let your shortstop or second baseman take care of it not because you can or cannot do this it's awesome when pitchers do that sweet barehanded grab and throw mm-hmm. it to first. That's yeah. super cool looking, but the moment they get back to the <clears> dugout, <throat> they are scolded by their pitching coach. Absolutely, because if they get hurt... And probably in a lot of pain. Yes. <laughs> if they get hurt, the entire team suffers for it. Yeah. And it's the same way with uh, an actor, where if you are Tom Cruise, if you are Louis Tan, and you get hurt, the entire crew suffers for it. And I, I agree with you that it's very cool when you can have this art form, when you can have this thing to be able to say, I have done this. But that in exchange for everybody else's job security. And here's what I will say. I think it's just fine if you were doing a fight scene. If you were, are doing this really choreographed fight scene and then somebody accidentally heel kicks you in the face and you get a fat bruise, you have makeup artists there that are going to make that go away. And you're going to start production in an hour, you know, and it's fine. But if you're hanging off the side of an airplane, you don't have to have a close-up shot of that. You know what I mean? You can CG things. You can uh, do stunt doubles. You can do uh, camera angles like cinematography to hide that. If you're going to be in a car accident, an actual literal car accident in John Wick, there are options to make it look very much like it. And sure, it's not perfect. It'd be great if it were perfect. But to me, the sacrifice, the possibility of the sacrifice there is not worth other people's jobs. <clears throat> I mean, you, you, you would say it is. Why? Well, no. Well, what I would say, just to agree with you a little bit here, is not simply just because people are going to lose their jobs, but whether you like it or not, and whether I like it or not, the movie-making business is a business. Right. And... Tom Cruise can get away with it because he's Tom Cruise and has built up that credibility. And if Tom Cruise is in your movie, you're going to get some money from it most of the time, unless you're the mummy. (laughs) In that case, just make a better movie. But, like, it costs – studios won't insure your movie Mm. if you are wanting – if you aren't getting trained stunt artists who can be replaced. replaced. And so that – so if you are – trying to do that your movie is going to be much more expensive which means it's going to cut into the budget it's going to cut in the budget of other things like the 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 hollywood machine is kind of encouraged to be a machine by getting stunt or, or by not having stunt or by when you want tom cruise to do his own stunts right if you just get somebody else and him have me a stand in, your movie's cheaper, it's easier to make, more movies can get made. Like I the, there is a benefit there. Mostly it's a financial benefit if stunt actors be stunt actors and reg, like actual actors be actual actors. Because it's what they're paid to do, it's what they professionally have been trained to do, it's what they went to school for, and if they get injured, they find another guy that looks like Tom Cruise and put a wig on him. And put him in there. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that big of a deal. The only reason why an actor would want to do his own stunts would be for the self-gratification of it. It's very cool. I mean, that's not true. Why why else? Okay, so let's go, like, what, um, Ip Man. Have you ever watched Ip Man? No, I have not. Martial arts movies, the three of them, have Donnie Yen, who played the blind guy, forget his name, in uh, Rogue One. Right. Donnie Yen. World class martial artist, yeah, and displays that like he cre- uh, Let's go with somebody even more well known, Jackie Chan. Right, he is arguably a martial artist first, and then an actor. Not saying he's a bad actor. I would say he's a martial artist first, and then a singer second, <laughs> and then like, there you go. a chef third, <laughs> and then like an actor. Look, <laughs> I'm not saying he's a bad actor, or whatever. I'm just saying like this is what he does. And when you want to bring that to the so somebody you know a talent scout he can also be a really good actor. Donnie Yen's a fine actor. He he was fine in Rogue One. He was a great character in that. Right. Um, Probably my favorite character actually. Yeah, like I loved how he like the Force became more than just 
magic powers. Right. It was a religion to him. It was great. He was a great character, yeah. So if you want a good actor, but you also want a martial artist, are you going to hire Donnie Yen and say, no, you can't do your martial arts. We just want you to be there acting. Why would you why would you hire him in the first place? So here here's the difference here. Number 1, he is bringing the talent to the table and not going out and seeking to gain that talent. Like before he was an actor, he was a martial artist. Same with Jackie Chan, same with Jet Li, same with Tony Jaa. All of these guys were dancers/martial artists, choreographers. They knew this stuff and then they got into movies for that. And that was their knowledge beforehand. And so that's different on a level of Tom Cruise as an actor has been acting for years and is now deciding, you know what? I think I want to do my own stunts. And so I'm going to start training for it. I- I'm sure he trained for it. I'm oh, sure he's no. Tom Cruise you know has I mean? been training to do stunts since probably the first Mission Impossible. That's the first action movie I can think of. You yeah, know how long like that movie? But that's like still a decade into his career. Okay. But at this point, it's been 30 years. He has now reached a level where he can be a martial, he can, not a martial artist, he's not much of a martial artist, but he can do those dangerous things with some confidence because he's had the preparation and the training. It's not just like Tom Cruise shows up on set and they say, okay, now you're going to go jump off this bridge. And he's like, oh, okay. It's like, <laughs> okay, we're going to make this movie in which the script has you jumping off a bridge for the next six months. You're going to learn how to safely do this thing so that when the day comes, you can make it happen, and we can get a close-up shot of you reacting to jumping off a bridge rather than have it be in the wide shot and just see somebody jumping off a bridge. Or have a and green then you, behind you. Yeah, and then yeah. you, when you land in the water below it, being like, oh, I just jumped off a bridge. No, we want you to actually do that in order to get – because filmmaking is at its very core about emotion and being mm-hmm. able to convince yeah, somebody, I'd whether that. that's about love or – or uh, you know, anger acting, or it's it's just acting. It's about conveying a real like acting reflecting, is about conveying real reflecting emotions. somebody's reactions and emotions to the situation they're in in a way that an audience can connect with. And if a person is going in to see Mission Impossible Five, they're not going to stand there and say, "Okay, yeah, I you have to convince me that I would do this." But you want them to be able to say. Holy crap! He just jumped off a bridge. If I jumped off a bridge, I would be reacting just like he just did. Because he actually did it. And he knows what it's like to jump off that bridge. And so you are, by simply getting somebody else because it might be dangerous, uh, taking away from an entire art form of film. So here, you know, I'm going to back you up a little bit here. You talked about, like, Tom Cruise is trained for this. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, let's take one of Tom Cruise's milder movies... And compare that... Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. Have you seen Jerry Maguire? Yes. Okay. Compare that to the production cost of what he gets paid, of what the, everybody gets paid, to the most popular uh, Ip Man film of production cost and things like that. <laughs> no, Nobody has seen Ip Man. So. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, the, the difference in... Uh, or maybe Jackie Chan for that matter. Jackie Chan's different a little bit because if he gets hurt, he still goes through it. Oh, Jackie Chan is incredible. He is ridiculous. Uh, he is the exception. Pause to this, this right now and go watch. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Every Frame a Painting, and it talks about Jackie Chan and his ability to create physical comedy through action. And it's because he creates funny situations, but also is dedicated to the art, the art form of martial martial arts. And right, it's it's really cool. Go watch it. But uh, like you'll wait, see... give them time. No, but they're pausing. Give them it. time. They're pausing it. They don't need time. All right, they, they can. They li- just finished it. They We're can good. literally no, stop. Des, time. it's okay. We can go now. <laughs> okay, so uh, but you can see like outtakes that he will break his leg, sure, and then his cast will be painted like his pants and shoe, so that <laughs> he can be walking around That's and so jumping and doing things like, and he he literally will just do this stuff right anyway, and that's. He is the exception to the rule. No, he's not the exception. There are several. Like Leo DiCaprio in Django Unchained in the... Shatters the glass in his hand? When he shatters the the skull. Oh. He, like, punches it. Didn't mean to do that, though. He did not mean to hurt himself. It's... But he still goes on with it. Like, what I'm saying is that your stunts should be part of your acting. They should not be separate. And, but my point is that 
the type of movie that's being made there and the production costs are for this for Jackie Chan and so Jackie Chan can do his own stunts. And if Jackie Chan gets hurt, like they're prepared. Well, he still has a studio behind him funding him. But but they're prepared for that to happen. Like they they don't hire Jackie Chan unless they specifically want a martial arts movie with a guy who does his own stunts because it's a martial arts exciting fun action movie. Like that's why you get these guys like Jet Li or Tony Jaa specifically for these martial arts movies. It's a genre. A kung fu movie is a genre. Well, sure, sure, but I mean, Keanu Reeves is it's like I think you're actually helping my argument right now because you're saying that if a company wants to make a quality action film, they'll hire somebody who's willing to do their own stunts and dedicate themselves to the performance. Here's the difference: you don't want Keanu. These days, you actually might want Keanu Reeves for that. You you can probably get yeah him as for long a, yeah a don't price don't put him in the days. lake house yeah. What the you can who probably made get that him, choice as you, pro- You don't want Tom Cruise for that, though, because he costs way too much to take that risk. Well, I mean, that risk comes with him, though. The studio's like, well, they still have to calculate that. It's a calculated risk. Like, he's he's doing what he does because he knows how to do it, so let's spend the money on him. And, like, it's not like they don't know he's an action, like, stuntman. Like, he, they don't know. It's not like they're, they're... unaware that he likes to do his own stunts so hire somebody else there's the star power factor is what brings tom cruise into it because he'll bring people into your theaters to watch the movie right i'm just saying the production team and the money that's being spent is far more for a an a-list actor like tom cruise or even a b-list actor like keanu reeves than a how dare you a q-list actor like tony ja he He was the one oh he was an a-list actor he's the one (laughs) How dare you? <laughs> uh, but really, at the end of the day, we have to understand that there is, we, like like you said, it's a business. There is a value on these actors. There is an actual literal value on these actors of how much they cost. And if you're going to be paying so much money to get the star power of Tom Cruise, you should protect that investment and the investment of Everybody, because you're not going to get your C-list, uh, you know, speaker guys, your, your C-list lighting guys. You're going to get your top of the line A-list lighting guys, and then those top of the line. Well, let's bring this back are... to baseball because that's the language you speak. Okay, let's just substitute pitcher back into this this conversation. Like, you want a pitcher who can pitch really well. You right. want a pitcher who's going to be able to take your team. And lead you to victory. Right. You're not... So you do all you can to protect him outside of that. Yeah, okay, okay, don't touch anything with your bare hand. Just duck. You know, don't take unnecessary risk. But if you want to win and have your your game... Like, have your team be good, then you get the, the guy who's good at what he does rather than just some guy who's less expensive. I, I agree, exactly. But then I tell that guy, protect yourself. Okay, I so, have an investment in you. I think that... And, the, if he, maybe, and maybe he steps up and says, no, nah, I've worked so hard to be able to bare hand line drives. I've worked my <laughs> tail end that's off. That's what I play baseball for. Right. It's, I Why? I worked my tail end off to grab that ground ball with my bare hand. I can totally do it, coach. I would say, I don't care. I okay. don't care that you can do that. I don't want you to. I think here's the problem. We're separating the idea of actor and stunt stunt. They are separate for a lot of things. Chris Evans, all the Marvel's people, Marvel people, Tony, uh, Tony Stark, what's his name? Robert Downey Jr. doesn't do his own stunts. He right. basically just goes into a studio and talks now. Right. Because everything else is CGI. But why are you hiring Tom Cruise if you don't want him to do his own stunts? When you know full well this is what he does. This is in his contract. It's not him just saying, no, I want to do this. It's him. It's it's like, you're hiring me? Okay, you're hiring me to do your stunts and to act for you. So you go in there. It's a risk. It's just like you hire a baseball player to or a pitcher to pitch to do what he has trained to do. Yeah, there are certain things you can say, okay, no, this is too risky and maybe whatever. But for Tom Cruise... I would assume. I don't know him personally. Oh, I do. 
He's a good guy. I don't know. He, I, I don't whatever. know Tom Cruise personally. I yeah, I, nobody believed you. By the way, side story, Jackie Chan can actually sing. Oh, I'm like, okay. Really good vocalist. Cool. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway, you're hiring Tom Cruise to be your star power actor man and your stunt man. You hire him for what he can do and, and, and has been trained to do. And so I agree. If your actor isn't good at doing stunts, then don't hire him to do stunts. Mm-hmm. But if he is, then hire him because it will only be... There's always a risk. You, there's a risk whether or not you have a stuntman. It's going to cost you more even if you have to hire a second stuntman. There's always a risk. There's a risk if you're not doing stunts. Any actor can get hurt at any time. But if you are looking to create art rather than create a product, then h- hiring an actor who can act and also do stunts and be able to put both of those things in the mo- like in the film makes your piece of art better. And so it really just depends on what you're setting out to do. Mm -hmm. And and I don't disagree with that. And in fact, I think uh, we can both agree that we both definitely see the other side of the equation. Like very, very... No, everything you say is wrong and stupid. You're a good man. You're a monster. (laughs) I said you're a good... That's wrong and stupid. You're not a good man. That's what I I was implying. I agree. Anyway, uh, no, uh, but... Here's what kind of a, a final thought, and I just think that because uh, we're running out of time here, but I just think that there should be some sort of measurement on risk when it comes to stunts. Oh, that's a thing. No, that's a thing. <laughs> and if there is a there are, risk of major injury, nah. There are actor oh, insurance companies. That's right. a thing. Oh yeah, oh, so, yeah. I'm sure positive then that they have a measurement of risk. One hundred percent. And so, if that's the case, there should be things that lead actors should not be doing, and. That's just like, you know what, this is something that we're not prepared to allow you to do because of your value to this movie. I'm positive you can. This is not an insult to you. Be great. This is us just protecting our investment and the jobs of the people on this movie. And that, so if you want to do the choreographed fistfights and ride a motorcycle around, cool. If you want to hang out of an airplane or off of a building or jump off of a bridge, nah, we're we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and have a stunt man. Here's that. the thing: what you're saying is a thing. That's how that's the norm. Yes, it. You are uh, talking about reality right now. Yes. What I think is that there should be more risk taking in movies because that will create better art. And so, if Tom Cruise wants to hang off the side of a plane, yeah, it's gonna cost you a lot. But as a as the creative force behind it, I don't know the screenwriter, the director, whoever whoever's the guy who's creating a piece of art which isn't really much of a thing in mission impossible anymore um they should be all for that they should want that to happen and fight for it because it creates a better piece of art and you think that that is okay at the expense of the the insurance and the jobs of everyone oh, around do you think the crew doesn't know like they've gotten to a business where it's about the actors and the actors can the actor can just storm off and not want to at any point like that doesn't mean they want that to happen or that's a good thing. I'm saying the risk is worth it. And if the what, what, if the crew is there just to hold up a light, I would hope that the crew is there to also contribute toward a, a piece of art. Like studio production companies, like they have their own crews. Like they don't just hire random people all the time. Terry Crews. Yeah, they hire Terry Crews to do everything. <laughs> um, I got the lights! <laughs> Uh, I'm the best boy! <laughs> <laughs> There's good, good boys here to help you out! <laughs> I think the risk is worth it. Because in reality, it doesn't happen very often. People get hurt, sometimes it gets shut down, but the vast majority of reality is that it doesn't. People Or people get hurt and just push on through. Here, the, the final... Would that scene in which Aragorn kicked the helm Brooks after toe. after thinking that per, uh, Pippin and Mary had Her been dad. killed by orcs been less or or been as good if he didn't actually break his toe in that kick and his scream was actually a scream of agony because he broke his toe right did did they plan for that to happen is that a stunt no but it made the movie better well so that's a good point. 
We're, Thank you. We're way over time. That was, but uh, some cosmic person's telling us to stop. Talking. Way over time. And so no, but and I would say I totally agree with you. But if that would have stopped production, would it have been worth that five second scene to stop production for I don't think it did. I think I think Vigo Mortensen just powered through a broken yeah, toe. Yeah, oh one hundred percent. But if he had broken his whole foot and couldn't act, would that five second scene have been worth I mean we're getting for, into a whole thing here, but right. likely that wouldn't stop production. There's a billion other things you could you could film. Right. You would right. just have to rearrange his schedule so that he comes back later when he's or just shoot things just that, shoot scenes, shoot scenes that don't have his feet. Right. But uh I understand what you're saying. Yes, I agree that if an actor just wants to get that like glory shot of him being doing a stunt and it's not about the passion of cre- of doing like stunts and being able to be good at that art form then yeah stop danny trejo i respect that right he's a cool guy he doesn't want to do stunts because he also looks out for those guys who you know if he just if he gets hurt he's also a 70 year old man <laughs> not lying he is 70 years old Jeez. so there's a risk there's probably a higher risk yeah. that he's gonna <laughs> break a hip or something so i respect that i'm not saying yeah. he's wrong but i respect more when artists pursue their art over the machine of hollywood well, guys, let us know what you think. Uh, thank you so much for listening to the Nerdy Gritty. Uh, tell us in, I, don't know, I guess we're posting this on YouTube to begin with. Yeah, so I think so. Tell us in the comments what you think about this. and uh, Tell me how I'm right. And if you have uh, any ideas of things that we should discuss, let us know in the comments. And yeah. uh, we, we're definitely taking, uh, definitely taking suggestions. So right. this has been the Nerdy Gritty. I am Dez. I'm Fox. Remember, save games, save lives. See you guys later. Bye.